how would you design a product around movies for Facebook? Hey everyone, uh, we're here today to do a PM mock interview with Selena, who is an incoming product manager at Facebook. Um, before we jump into the interview question, Selena, could you introduce yourself just a little bit to the audience? Yeah, nice to meet you. My name is Selena. Um, I actually know Stephen from Stanford GSB, where we're classmates, and just found a ton of value in Exponent and preparing for getting a product offer from Facebook. So really excited to be here today. We're super excited to have you on the show, Selena. Um, and so the question, the mock interview question that we will be doing today will be, how would you design a product around movies for Facebook? All right, product. So, yeah. This is a product design question, that interview question. Um, and it's sort of open-ended, but yeah, let's together figure out a product that we would design around movies for Facebook. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I think my first question before we get started would be, is this a product you're envisioning existing within the Facebook app or would this potentially be separate? It, you can be as open-ended as you'd like with this question. So yeah, feel free to operate within the Facebook app. I would, cons the constraint is just that it's something that Facebook itself as a company would launch. Okay. Um, and one more question. What do you think about hardware versus software? I know Portal is a big bet for Facebook. So do we want to maybe think on a hardware lens as well? Yeah, yeah, that's a great Not question. Not a literal lens, like hardware direction. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. So yeah, the question being, is there a hardware angle here? You can certainly brainstorm in that direction if you'd like to. Um, you're not constrained by that. Okay. Awesome. So I think the way that I'd like to go about this, um, first I'll talk a little bit about Facebook's mission and strategy and why we might be interested in getting into a movie product. Um, from there, I'll do a customer segmentation and prioritize one. And then we'll do a quick brainstorm about potential pain points and needs, um, prioritize one of those. And then from there, we'll come up with a few solutions and we'll, we'll evaluate on impact and maybe a couple other key metrics to pick one. And then I'll walk you through how I think I would do an MVP. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Thanks for mapping it out. Awesome. So I'm just gonna take a quick second to jot down my thoughts here. Awesome, take your time. All right, so Facebook's mission is to connect the world and bring people closer together and to give people a platform to express themselves about the things that they care about. So it totally makes sense to me as to why we would be interested in moving further into the movie space. I think movies and cinema and entertainment in general is something that people have used to connect together um, since movies were invented. And I think it has really global appeal. It doesn't matter where you're from, pretty much everyone enjoys um, getting together with friends and families and broader social communities around movies. Um, and also I think Facebook is making a lot of big bets in the general video realm. So on Facebook Watch, I know there's a big push to really make Facebook a home for entertainment and not just that, that social use case, but that you would actually be going to the app specifically to, to be entertained in your downtime. Um, I know thinking about the platform, Instagram TV also pursuing a similar approach um, to really provide a hub for all of that types of content. So I think there's the division also between there's creator content and then there's kind of more premium uh, kind of produced content. So movies to me would maybe sit within there. I think we can talk about, you know, what does it mean to be a movie? Does that necessarily predicate it's coming from Hollywood or, or wherever? Or um, would we include maybe creator movies and individual movies within that? Um, but yeah, overall, I think that movies is something that's important to think about. Um, there are some competitors in the space. I think Netflix would be the first one that comes to mind and it's crowded. I mean, Amazon offers movies as well, Hulu. Um, so I want to think about how can we offer something that's really differentiated. Got it. Yeah, and, and on that note, like I suppose, what, what, what do you think you'd lean into when you think about the com competition to Facebook? Yeah, so I would say what is Facebook's strength that these other providers don't have? And that to me is really the social graph the power of that connection between friends and family um, enables you to uh, unlock so much more value, both in the watching experience, but also in terms of content recommendation. 
So I would say that would be the angle that I would want to really emphasize here to uh, help us provide something that people would really be excited about. Awesome, cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a quick customer segmentation. Cool. All right, so the way that I see it um, in terms of segmentation for a movie product, I feel like there's two big buckets. On the one hand, there are creators, and on the other hand, there's viewers. So digging a little bit deeper on the creator side, I felt like there were three constituencies. Um, there's a professional creative vertical, which includes kind of major professional, like Hollywood type, you know, major motion films. Um, then I would say there's kind of professional influencer. Um, I think longer form content, you don't necessarily think of as like the same types of influencers on Instagram. So maybe that's more like indie film creators, not, not quite on the same level as like Hollywood. Um, and then on the viewer side, I thought I could bucket that maybe around usage, like high usage and low usage. So I think, you know, what is our goal here? Um, you know, is creating a movie product for Facebook. Is there any more specific goal you want me to focus on when I prioritize here? Otherwise, I would probably prioritize on uh, scale or scope and impact. So basically, how many potential users are in here and uh, which segment do we think maybe might be most impactful to, to the work for? That sounds like a great goal. You can go with, run with that. Yeah. Okay. So I think the one that stands out to me um, would maybe be on the creator side. And I'm actually, I think I missed one of my buckets here, which was a, a third type of creator, which is an everyday person who might want to create a movie. Um, and I think I want to go in that direction. And here's why. It's specifically around that um, kind of competitive advantage around the social graph. I feel like you could leverage that to make the creator experience of actually making a movie a more social experience. I haven't fully fleshed out how that might be the case, but to me that feels like right now when you create content, it's siloed. Either you're alone on your phone or you're like a fully professional person with a whole team. But it, is, there some, is there some way that we can unlock that creative experience that's more social? Mm. Got it, yeah, super interesting. So. Um, you're sort of thinking about like the creative experience being a social one, basically. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, got it. And I think if we look about the scope of of um, this segmentation, if we consider um, pretty much any user that has created some sort of video content in the past, and maybe take a percentage of those that have not yet that might be pulled into the market with this product, um, I think that actually has a very large scope compared to the other creator sites, which are more um, kind of concentrated within influencers or seriously concentrated in like uh, Fox and Sony and those types of places. Got it, got it, makes sense. Um, are you okay with that direction? Yeah, that sounds good. I, I'd love to hear maybe just like one quick thing um, about maybe one of the other customer segments and why you didn't pick that one. You can yeah. pick one. Yeah. So, I thought about the viewer side as well. I, this is really like a two-sided marketplace to me. You have the creation and then you have the viewing. Um, but I think right now, uh, Facebook Watch already has a pretty good UI in terms of viewing. And I think we can leverage that. Um, and we have really good kind of social features around if you're watching together, you can comment or react and you can see the reactions going by. And I think that that is a great start. Um, I think that's exciting, but to me, it's much more kind of zero to one unmet need around that social side that I don't feel is being served right now Got on it. the creator side. Got it. Yeah, I think that's a, a great innovative perspective, which is that socialness, you know, naively might come from the viewer's perspective from someone looking at this problem, but there's actually a way to add a socialness to the creator's perspective. So I'm curious to see what we come up with. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm going to take a minute now to brainstorm some pain points that creators would have around it being maybe not that social in the creative process. Awesome, take your time. Okay, so I've thought of four pain points um, around the whole creation process uh, being not social. So what are some pain points that people experience by creating alone? Um, the first one is wondering, is my idea any good? So is, is the overall theme that I'm approaching my script or the, just the general pitch of my movie, is that something that is interesting and valuable to people? I think that's something that can be really hard if you're in your own personal mental echo chamber to know. And if you make a movie that no one's interested in, you basically wasted all your time. Um, 
So that's the first one. The next one is maybe that it's a lonely experience. I think this one especially came to mind given we are in uh, socially distanced times right now, yep. but that I see a ton of people on my feed, you know, recording themselves alone in their various places. So is there some way to make that recording process a little bit more communal? Um, I know a lot of movies are even trying to be recorded via Zoom right now. This interview itself is being recorded via Zoom right now. So is there some way we can um, make that a more, more communal experience? Um, the next one was around like, okay, maybe I lack all the skills needed to get my movie to full fruition. So maybe I'm really great at filming, but I'm not good at acting. Or maybe I'm great at script writing or sound editing, but um, not, not the next step. So is there a way to, to bring in more people with more skills somehow. Um, and then last one, this was around maybe like, can my audience be bigger? Like as one person, I only have a certain amount of reach in terms of um, my, my general population that I can reach out to of friends and family and my network. So is, is there an opportunity to leverage more people to bring that bigger audience and make the movie more of a success? Got it. This is an awesome list. Um, yeah, what, what are you sort of thinking are the priorities here with the pain points? So I think I really want to measure like impact to goal. So if our goal is, you know, to make a movie product for Facebook that is inherently social, which one do we believe will have the most impact? Um, so I would probably try to see which one is the biggest pain. Um, so looking through, I think there's definitely some immediacy around the loneliness of creating. And I think this one's differentiated too, because most of the ways that individual people create video for social media is with like the, the front facing cam, like is in itself a, a lonely experience. So that one to me feels highly impactful to this goal. Um, let me see. And I think another one that stands out is like, can my audience be bigger? I think there actually might be an opportunity to tie those two together. Um, if, if you're doing this in a more social way, because there may be a, a, as an end point that the audience would be magnified as a result. Totally. Yeah, I think I, I really thought the lonely experience one was interesting because it's kind of a not thought about problem, but definitely true. And uh, yeah, particularly presently a problem for this day. So yeah, yeah. I'm curious about that one. I think it's interesting because it's in, it's almost inherent in the workflow today of how how video exists. So mm. that to me signals that there's maybe a new way to, to think about it that could be really additive. Definitely. Um, to mention one that I didn't pick, so lacking skills, I think that that's an interesting one that to me feels a little bit outside of Facebook's wheelhouse. Um, I would expect that that's more on the like Final Cut Pro, um, maybe Reddit boards or wherever creatives go to to meet up and co collaborate together. And I think that um, probably it would be better served to focus more on that in essence of socialness in itself. Got it, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So we're gonna focus on this I'm lonely and maybe we'll see if the audience can be brought in as a result, but really the, the main pain point is the loneliness here. Okay, so I will take a minute now to brainstorm some solutions for this. Okay. Okay, so I've thought of three potential solutions here. Um, the first one is something we could probably MVP via groups, but this would be around creating creative groups for moral support kind of throughout the movie process. So um, you could join this particular subset and let people know about your general project timeline and they could kind of check in with you and give you kudos and be a sounding board for ideas as you move on. And I could see this being really beneficial to also have like networking between creatives um, so that if you're part of this group, then you can um, more easily work together in the future and kind of percolate from the hive mind of, of creative ideas. Um, the next idea I had was uh, this new feature for Portal called Portal Audience. So this would be a way to really quickly get viewers earlier on in the creative process. So if you're recording via portal, uh, people could just join in and drop in and see what you're up to and you could talk to them. Um, but they would be kind of like a one-to-many. Um, I think there's some privacy concerns there. We could talk about how we can set up those features, but 
um, that could be a fun way to kind of get, get more people in, in your creative room. And the last idea, so this one is a little bit out there, but I think there's an opportunity to maybe like create a movie together through Facebook. So um, I got this idea through like the moments that you can share like with your friends when it's your friend anniversary and they, you can create a movie of your friendship. So what if we went even a step further with that and we made it so that you could create an actual recording movie with your friends and film each scene and kind of hand it off. So you could even do it asynchronously and kind of slowly create a movie over time. Mm, I'm thinking even further about this now. Maybe it could be like, you know, the movie Boyhood, how they kind of record little snippets, like, I don't know if it's a minute a day, but just over his whole life. So maybe you could make the video of your life on Facebook. I think that would align really well with um, the rest of the platform having um, your memories over time. Yeah, super interesting. And so for that last idea, like, is sort of, I would love to hear a little bit more of kind of what, what you're imagining. And, and I guess also hearing your preference on which one you want to dive into and which one um, sounds exciting in terms of moving forward. I think, I think I am excited about this last one as I'm thinking about it more. I think really it aligns well, um, both on the social experience with being able to create something together, but also yeah. in Facebook's bread and butter, which is, you know, kind of collecting uh, memories and moments uh, between you and your friends and family. So I, I think that's the one I want to go with. I, I think, you know, to put metrics around it, it would be like impact. I might think about effort as well. I think this one is probably a little higher effort than creating groups for moral support, for example. But I think the impact would be super, super high um, on making movies a more inclusive social creative process and maybe potentially impact a lot of people's lives for the better if they are able to kind of chronicle their life over time um, and everyone could have their own personal movie that could be very rewarding and special. Yeah, totally. And I mean, there's a lot of interesting thought there, just like even the statement you just said about everyone having their own personal movie and like what that even means for people and how they view their lives. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm curious, like, yeah, tell me a little bit more about kind of what you're imagining in this experience. And I would love to just maybe poke out some of the features or hear a little bit about what the high priority features would be. Yeah, absolutely. So I think this would be probably it could live under uh, creating a video post in the near term and it could ask you like, oh, do you want to add this to your movie? So actually maybe it could be super, super lean whenever you're like sharing a story or something instead of kind of collecting it to memories. You could say, do you want to add this to your movie? And that could be the first discovery point. And then it could explain like, yeah, you know, it's collecting a movie over the course of your life. I think there could be a separate entry point within Facebook Watch if you're like, I'm a more real deal video creator and I'm going to have my army of socially distant creators to make this amazing thriller. I don't know. Um, and so then you could go to watch specifically. And I think then there would be probably some sort of like of the video pop up and you could hit record. Um, there probably need to be some really basic editing, just probably trimming on the ends initially. I don't think we need to get too far into kind of more mechanics of effects and sound editing at the initial point. Um, sure. And then there's probably something of like tagging people in the project. So you could probably add people in and remove them. I could see if someone's just doing a little moment, maybe you don't want them in there the whole time. Um, and then there's somewhere you'd need a database to store all of these movies. If this is longer form content, then there's definitely storage that we need to think about. Um, and then maybe it's like, do you have like a publish versus still editing mode? I think definitely. So there probably needs to be some sort of like my library of of existing in process movies and ones that are already published definitely um i'm curious like so you know and and maybe the the answer sort of is baked into my question but um youtube is obviously a place also for people to upload and, and brainstorm and create some of these like maybe lower fidelity or, or sort of like lighter weight videos and movie experiences um so facebook's like in this world that facebook is creating like how will you really leverage some of the social stuff to really differentiate it from YouTube? Yeah, I think it's really about like tagging other people to be able to add one of their videos to your, your life movie or your thriller. I think both can work. Um, and yeah, maybe you can even have people as contributors over time. So I think with YouTube, right, you finish something, you upload it, that's it. Um, maybe there's a little bit of editing you can do versus this is kind of a continuous ongoing project that again can be asynchronous that you can tag your friends and do it do it later in little chunks that measure up to something really big and meaningful. 
Totally. Yeah, it sounds like we're almost inventing a new type of content in general, like that doesn't really exist right now. But like, what if we can make these movie experiences that were both living and social in the way that they were created and added to? Yeah, I love that. Living is the exact word. (laughs) Yeah, I'm curious, like, for you also, like, so what what are some worries that you have about this? Like, you know, obviously, this is a new type of content, it could be a lot of work, but like, what, what are some of the key issues that you're worried about when you're thinking about moving in this direction or designing this direction? Yeah, I think um, the first thing that comes to mind is privacy. So if you are chronicling someone's entire life, I think, you know, there's a lot of questions there and maybe someone's okay with it when they start, but then they're 40 and they're no longer okay with it. So how, how do we manage that? Um, I think there's another one around like retention. So if this is something that you're not posting for years, then the value to the user well, I mean, there's a huge peak in value when you post it. Um, there's definitely value through chronologuing it um, or chronicling it. But can we make sure that people still stay engaged and excited if they're not posting it till that point? Do they want to post it in chapters? Is this something that we want to make visible sooner? I think that's definitely something I'd want to experiment with pretty early on to understand. Totally. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess I'm also curious. So... Yeah, I mean, obviously privacy will be important because you might not want to show everyone your life story. You might want to show parts of it, things like that. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm curious, I guess, like, uh, as a last maybe follow-up question, like, yeah, what, what metrics would you look at here to see or evaluate the success of this product? And yeah, and yeah feel free to add other pieces also, by the way, if there are other points you wanted to touch on that we didn't get to as we start to wrap up the interview. Mm-hmm. So I think in terms of metrics, there definitely depends on like what stage, if this is at launch, I would be concerned more tactically, like, is this working? Are people able to use these features versus more downstream? I'd be interested in engagement around the actual posts themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that does again, call to question, like when are people posting? If we're posting more in chapters then we can test engagement sooner. Um, I think retention is another one. So I think my first metric would probably be like click through and maybe number of number of installments added on average per user. Um, I probably wanna look at a monthly number if this is something that I wouldn't expect people to do it necessarily every day, but probably a couple times a month if that's really the use case we're going to. Um, I probably also want to look at the average length of an installment. I think that has important implications on the storage side, which is more more of an infrastructure thing, but I think that's important to consider. Um, And I probably also wanna look at the average number of friends included in a creation process. I think the a key hypothesis here is this isn't solo creating, this is a social living creator experience. So I would wanna definitely validate that by seeing additional people added. I don't know what the sweet spot is there, but definitely more than one person. Um, yeah, and on the, on the retention side, I'd probably want to look at the, the two month retention for the feature. So of the users who added something a month ago, or are they still adding? Um, 30 days later, basically. Got it, got it, super helpful. Um, cool, well, is there other pieces to this interview that, that we didn't get to touch on or pieces you wanted to add or clarify or hone in on before we start to wrap it up? Um, I guess maybe there's something around discovery. So I mentioned maybe we, we could put that in, in stories as a first point, but I do want it to be differentiated. So do we do a, a big splash? Like, do we even launch a movie like Boyhood um, mm. to, promote this or how how do we let people know that this is a new special different way of of chronicling your life and of creating video that is social and living um i think there's an opportunity to make a really big splash to to actually do a video um even if that's like a year um so yeah i I would be considering that rollout plan or maybe we just want to focus on a particular country and tell the story of that country and then use that to gain momentum Yeah, I think it's interesting. Like, it sounds like there's a couple angles here also about like, you know, is it your own living story or is it, you know, like, and and maybe really tapping into that desire to chronicle one's life. Um, But then also maybe just like this creative energy too and and sort of like which direction it goes would be interesting. Mm -hmm. I do think there's two user segments. I think there's the one which is chronicling your life and there's the other one which is more like I'm an indie film producer. Right, 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 right. This this type of producing. (laughs) <laughs> I guess, yeah, like a last question maybe before we close would be like, which one of those two pop user populations would you prioritize? I think the more general user, um, as we talked about it, it really sounded to me like a big opportunity that could impact any everyday person. And so I think the scope is much larger. I think that's great if indie film producers can get value out <coughs> of that 
that same feature set and we, maybe long term we would want to put some more professional additional advanced features on there but i think again thinking about the the wheelhouse of facebook is is really for the everyday civilian it's not necessarily a an artistic product that we do have creator content on there so i would want to design for for the everyday person awesome yeah um <laughs> okay cool well <clears throat> We can take a deep breath and, and you know, the interview is, is done. <laughs> um, great job, Selena. That was really great. <clears throat> Why don't you, would love to hear your thoughts on kind of like how that went for you and um, yeah, any self feedback that you have before I jump into some of the feedback that I wrote about what made this interview so great. Yeah, overall, I think it went really well. I like the idea. Um, I feel like it, it grew as we were talking about it, which is always kind of fun. I think in interviews in general, if you feel like that's how the rapport is going between you and the interviewer, you're on a good track. Um, I think the one area where I maybe could have slowed down a little was around proposing the MVP. I think I could have like actually taken some time to draw out the flow. Um, I don't think I missed anything major, but in general, I think that's a point to, to pause and at least think about, okay, like what, what is the user journey? What is each step that's important to take? And then I can pick one to add more color to, to talk through in more detail. Definitely. And, and also, we're, we try to keep these videos a little short, so I did push you along a little bit. But yeah, normally in an interview, we might have just rat hold on that for 10, 10 minutes, and you might have drawn things on the whiteboard, things like that. A virtual whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me just jump into some of the things that I thought you did really well, um, and just overall thoughts about the interview. So first of all, I thought you, had, you started off really strong with really great questions and the great follow-up questions, like uh, asking about Portal and how this question fit into the Facebook ecosystem, which also demonstrated your knowledge of Facebook generally in that ecosystem, which is really effective for an interview. Um, you did a great job outlining the map of the interview, and then you stuck to it mostly throughout the interview. So here's where I'm gonna go, and then every point you went there, you're like, I'm gonna write some notes about this, I'm gonna write some notes about this. Um, I thought that the, you, you even asked some like deep questions, which was always kind of cool, especially in higher level, uh, more senior Facebook, or you know pm interviews broadly um, like what is a movie like what does that even mean like what, what what is the scope of this question and you sort of pushed on the edge of that which i thought was interesting from a philosophical perspective um and then you, the other piece i really liked is you always stayed grounded in the mission and the goals and the uh, competitive advantage of facebook so um why are we doing this like even at the very end the last question i just asked you if we're doing this because facebook is for the everyday people it's more of a social ecosystem it's not really an artistic uh, platform right now and, and maybe it could be at one point but um, it's more about uh, kind of like everyday usage and things like that um, I thought that you yeah so you know asking questions with proposing things is also really effective so there was one point where you said something like you know I could go in these different directions but I'm gonna pick this one what do you think and I thought it was really effective because it showed that you had the leadership but also the ability to check in with me as an interviewer um, I thought that you know, you did a great job brainstorming a lot of fun ideas and we sort of latched onto the most moonshotty idea. And I love that you weren't afraid to go there. Um, in an actual interview, like that's totally fine to go to these moonshot ideas. And it's definitely less scoped out than some of the other ones like a creative group, but it also allowed you to talk a little bit more creatively and brainstorm and kind of jive with the interviewer. Um, and we did a little bit of that. And obviously had this interview been longer, we might've even talked about it more and kind of came up with ideas or thoughts around it. Um, and so just showing that creative muscle, which is so essential to a product design interview, a successful product design interview question, um, was, was really effective here. Um, I thought also you just had a thoughtful discussion around metrics towards the end too. It was clear that not only could you brainstorm, but you could also bring in those metrics. Um, just a couple points on things that I thought you could do uh, like differently or maybe I wasn't sure about. Um, again, I thought this interview was short. So yeah, I, I wasn't as totally clear on the MVP. I was like, okay, so what exactly does this look like? What exactly would this experience be? And we sort of scoped it out even a little bit later in the interview. Um, and then I think, yeah, just, you know, I, I asked a question about YouTube, but you can always bring that forward in an interview if you have mm -hmm. the time. Just say, hey, like, I know this might start sound to be a little bit like YouTube. I'd love to discuss the competitive differentiation there before um, the interviewer actually asks about that, just so that it shows that you're thoughtful about it. Mm -hmm. um, but not a huge faux pas in an interview. Um, other than that, I thought you did a really effective job um, and you went to really thoughtful discussion and um, it was just cool to see the whole product design thought process, um, you know, from the beginning through the end of that product design. And, and obviously we could have further product meetings and discussions to scope out what that actual product would look like. Yeah, we're gonna roll this out now, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, Thank any thoughts, so reactions to, to anything I just said or anything like that? 
Um, I think all really great points. Um, totally agree. Like, I think we were aligned. I was like, I rushed through the MVP a little bit. So I think, again, taking a, a minute there and just thinking, like, what, what screens are essential? What, what should I do absolutely first? Like, what is that pared down? Um, yeah, and then always, like, think about, especially on the comp competitive differentiation, like, if there's a little voice in your head saying, like, oh, this sounds a little bit like this product, like, I, that should be led by you, not by the interviewer. So totally agree. Totally. Um, but Selena, thank you so much for being on the show. This is super valuable, super helpful. Obviously, you're an experienced PM interviewer. And um, yeah, it's, it's just been great to hear your perspective on this. Yeah, it was super fun. Nice to see you also, even if you had Zoom. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Selena. And good luck to everyone watching with your interview. Good luck.